So I just wanted to provide an update here on, on the price action that we're seeing. We're seeing the kind of what we talked about in our last video about these gaps being filled, and we're seeing it now. The only thing we don't know about a gap filling is when it will fill, but we just know typically the gap will fill, right? Um, so what we're seeing here is just a continuance of the trend we've seen over the last few times in this zone, which is um, taking us back well into last year, even back um, in July, you see this zone typically um, indicates that we'll have uh, gaps. So that's kind of what we're doing here with the last 48 hours is filling this gap. And the unique thing is, which is why I said this, we could be on the verge of another retest here uh, from the F2 around that 10 to 12 cent range is because we're now curving the 14, right? This is the 72. And the 72, uh, because we weren't down here long enough to curve the 70, it's, it's somewhat curving, but we have, weren't down here long enough to curve it significantly. So now you see the 14 rising, um, you know, because of the uh, significance of the, the gap fill to the upside, now you see the 14 rising. And what we're potentially going to have here is a golden cross to the uh to the upside right so the last golden cross the last time we had the 14 cross the 72 was um down excuse me what am i looking at right here uh we had the 14 cross the 72 as far as the golden cross was it, it it pretty much signaled this entire run right this entire run from what is this five no 620 up until 1074 was signaled back on was this october 26 right this entire run was signaled then and so what we're looking at here um, is if we can maintain these levels especially at least here or above it it's going to position us for another golden cross and based off of history here we can see that we typically even back here was this back in july this was the run that it signaled I'm going to go back a little further. This is back in April. This is the run that I signaled. So, so far, um, I'll say for at least the last three or four times we've had um, this cross, it signals a run. And the beautiful thing about this trend that we're on now is we did not consolidate at the uh, close to the peak, which it's, it can be typical. Typically, you can hope to kind of consolidate somewhere at the bottom of the zone, but we did not give the gains up, right? So this is what you can call uh, setting higher highs, right, on, on the trend. And we can establish that trend or at least see if we're going to establish that trend by how this behaves uh, once we go through the, uh, the spike and have the consolidation point. Because then we'll say, okay, we've had two runs consecutively and we've um, a, a, attained higher highs. So this is the current trend, right? Because we had the uh, the cross here at around uh, October 26, roughly. And we had the run to 1076. And we consolidated right at the bottom of the zone at around uh, 7978 cent. This is kind of where. Um, we, we had the consolidation that had the spikes below, but ultimately we, we settled here. We did not give up the gains, 100% uh, of the gains we got back, which is perfect for setting a trend. And if we have this consolidation here and we're able to run up and start seeing some of these upper zones here and we consolidate, even if we consolidate at around 1074, that is a very strong signal for how uh, this run is going to go and what levels we're going to be uh, seeing on here. Because we know that the money is coming into the market. Typically, um, we see that around February. Um, you know, March is um, typically is not uh, that great of a month. Oh, excuse me, February is not that great of a month. But typically, we see the month the money come in in March. Excuse me. Uh, February is typically not that great of a month. But as as we close out the first quarter, we start seeing a lot of uh, money flow in, especially institutionalized, and then we have the Bitcoin having. So we know that we expect the this kind of like the signal to go out for uh, for, a crypt, for the crypto market. So the question is, where is some of that capital going to spill over to? Um, and uh, we know that it's going to come in uh, for some of the Titans. And speaking on a little side note here before we take a, take a look at our shorts, I wanted to point out that I know some people have been saying, oh, uh, we had this spike, um, I believe, I don't remember the coin's name, but uh, it's number 10 now and Doom's drop down to like number 11. 
Uh, first off, that's really insignificant. This isn't the first time that's happened. It's happened several times. Some coins will get like a spike and it'll kind of have like a swap there. But for the most part, they've just been in the top 10 for the last three years, three plus years. Um, and even if it's not, it has the, the, the position of um, the coin is not a, um, I don't want to say, it, it's not uh, a parallel to what the underlying um underlying case or use management case for the actual coin what we're trying to do here as far as for um, like gaining utility and getting it uh, accepted for like payment and things like that it's not really uh, underlying especially if it's not a significant drop in capital in the coin per se right so if the coin if another coin rises because people are investing in that particular coin because i don't know they came up with some new catalyst or they um cut mining rewards or something like that, uh, block rewards, um, you know, that's fine. And, you know, if that increases the overall value, that doesn't devalue uh, what's going on with dips, right? So I'm just going to keep that in mind. Um, as long as the, uh, the, the numbers inside the actual coin didn't cause um, that issue, well, let's say, like right now, I think Doge is roughly, I think like 11 billion, right? So if the reason it dropped out of the top 10 is because X coin, for example, um, created, you know, it went from 10 billion to 12 billion. So now it's worth a billion more, then that's fine, right? Now, if the reason is because Doge went from 11 billion to 8 billion, and that's why it came out because the coin actually lost 3 billion, then then we can have that conversation. But um, this this typically happens. What's going on right now? It's happened several times. Not the end of the world. Uh, just kind of take a look at the numbers, and it will alleviate some of the um, panic and flood that's going on uh, online and on X right now. Um, shorts, uh, yeah, dormant, not playing a big factor right now. Um, we'll see. Typically, that will come in um, as the trend starts to weaken or slow. Right now, um, I don't believe they're going to jump in front of a freight train. Um, Bitcoin's on absolute tear. Um, and again, this is kind of what I was talking about, the 14 crossing the 72. You got your indicator way back here uh, on the 7th, a week ago. You got that indicator, and then it's just been boom. So um, this is really great because you kind of expect this to happen around um, as we get closer to the halving. Uh, the happening <laughs> so uh, it's not uh, to be unexpected so we'll see um, as we kind of get closer to around 60k uh, you'll probably start to see some FOMO come in and um, you'll see some spillover and to some other coins as well as these as this coin continues to climb and become more of an institutional game Bitcoin shorts down for the day so yeah so shorts are not being really active right now uh, and, and, for, and for good reasons so kind of like what I said earlier if you, they typically are smart enough not to hop in front of a freight train they're typically trying to wait until the train's already kind of slowing and then they'll kind of jump in and see if they can make profit so uh, they're not stupid but uh, right now this is what we're looking at this is the catalyst that we're going to look for over the next couple or next few days is to kind of see if we're going to have uh, some convergence here and get a cross to kind of get that signal and I'll kind of signal the next um, run here. But that's that's going to require for those to kind of stay where we're at now, at least closing wise. Um, you know, price action and volatility throughout the day is not going to be the end all be all. But at least closing wise, kind of close where we are now or do better. And there's certainly a range to do there. Um, you know, typically we don't see uh, stiff rejections here until we get around nine cents. So even if we kind of trend sideways here, that's going to close the gap between that 14 and 72. And then we can kind of talk about the next leg up or the next um, big run. But we're going to need a few more days to kind of close this gap here. So it's not a it's not an extremely wide gap. Like it's not like the 272. But um, you know we'll need um, a few more days here to kind of see what uh, trend that we're setting overall. So anyway, know your thoughts. That's my price update for uh, for Doge. Uh, things are looking good. Um, I, I, again, I, I really liked where we uh, settled at. Uh, for the consolidation uh, it's beautiful not giving up those gains and it kind of gives you an idea of what to expect going forward so let me know your thoughts in the comment section and i'll see you guys in the next video